see uh, from the term itself it's very clear domestic or economic territory but uh, this concept of domestic territory or economic territory is uh, it it's more broader okay if normally we think that domestic is something uh, uh, which is a political frontier but actually it includes more than that okay So what all are included under domestic territory is very important. They can ask a question related uh, while calculating domestic income. Which all area or which all territory is considered while calculating domestic income. Okay. So we'll see that what all are included in the domestic territory. One is a normal political frontier. Okay. Which is normally the geographical territory of any country. So the so first uh, part of component of domestic territory is the normal political frontier. Here, when we say the normal political fr frontier or the normal geographical territory, it, it also includes the territorial waters of that country as well as the airspace of that country. So the political frontiers, including the airspace and territorial waters, is a major component of domestic territory. So that is that be very clear uh, these. Political frontier is included in the domestic territory. Then, this is very important, okay? Uh, take the case of India. We have many embassies, consulates in almost every country, okay? So, we have embassy in almost all every countries in the world. And in big countries, we have consulates also other than embassies, okay? Embassies basically will be located in national capital to deal with the a diplomatic relationship between India and other country. But consulates are basically set up in major cities uh, to give consular access to uh, citizens. Okay, if they have any problems, Indian citizen, if they have any problem or visa problem, etc. Consulates generally deal with it. Okay, so anyway, these embassies, consulates and military bases. So anything, these things, okay, embassies, consulates, military bases located abroad, Okay, be very clear. So, if you are considering the domestic uh, territory, this is also included. Okay, so in the case of India, uh, the embassy, Indian embassy in US, Indian embassy in Bangladesh, Indian embassy in Pakistan, all are part of domestic territory, even though it is outside India's political frontier. Okay, so be very clear. Embassies, consulates, military bases, all are included in the, located abroad, are, all are included in the domestic territory or another name for domestic territory is economic territory. Then, the ships, the aircrafts operated by the residents. See here, the key word is resident. So, Indian resident. We are not using the word Indian citizen or Indian national. We are using the word resident. Okay, so those who I will discuss, this is very important, who are the normal resident of a country. So that's very important, we'll discuss in detail. Okay, anyway, the ships, aircrafts operated by the residents between two or more countries. So those ships, aircrafts, so the ships, the aircrafts, etc. If they will be using international airspace, they uh, ships see aircrafts will be using international airspace ships will be using international waters so when they travel what the services they provide can be included under the uh, domestic income because they they are part of domestic territory okay so the ships aircrafts operated by that country's residents between two or more countries are included in the domestic territory okay so it's a larger Broader term, domestic territory or economic territory of a country means, okay? So, example, take the case of Air India. If you're considering Air India. Air India is owned by an uh, Indian entity, okay? So, here the resident is in, from India. The owner is from India. So, if the Air India is providing any services between foreign countries, like if Air India is giving services from Singapore to Japan, 
it's a foreign country but air india is owned by indian resident the entity the entity owner uh, ownership lies the to indian resident so that will come under the services provided by air india between japan or to us uh, singapore etc between those countries okay foreign countries will be included under domestic territory finally okay fishing vessels operated by fishing vessels operated by residents in the international water see naturally if it is in the territorial water it automatically falls we territorial water of india comes under the first category political frontier category but in international waters means beyond the territorial waters of that country international waters if a fishing vessel is there so that fishing vessel in the international water is a domestic territory similarly oil and natural gas rings in the international water oil rings or natural gas rings in the international water operated by residents is also part of domestic territory another important point is any area any other area which that particular country enjoys exclusive rights any area where a particular country enjoys exclusive rights of that area also will part will come under part of domestic territory take the case of antarctica see in antarctica india has three research stations so on those these three research stations that india india is having exclusive right see the three uh, research stations in antarctica are bharati dakshin gangotri and maitri so this is an area in antarctica but who is having the exclusive right india is having exclusive right so that the research stations in antarctica is also part of domestic territory so be very clear domestic territory is a broader concept don't uh, think only from uh, that india's political frontier india's map no it's beyond that okay so now very so this concept of domestic territory or economic territory is very important to understand the concept of domestic product as well as domestic income many upsc aspirants have enrolled for expensive offline and online coaching yet they don't have any personal mentor to help solve their problems to help such upsc aspirants ekam ias is providing three free one to one mentorship sessions you can talk to our mentors directly to resolve the issues you are facing in your current stage of preparation click the link in the description to schedule an appointment with your mentor